Do you want education through discussion? Do you think there's bias in the media? Has the political class let you down? Then join Sanity Check as they expose, inform, and enlighten through the new standard in talk radio. Saturday mornings, 94.3 FM, The Talker. Uh, they're starting to hear us now. 94.3 FM, the talker. This is Saturday Check. Libertarian Lou, Tea Party Mike. And on the line, Michael, we have Governor Gary Johnson. Good morning, Governor. Morning. Lou, great to be with you this morning. <laughs> Thank you so much for taking some time out. Uh, I know you're on your way, or maybe you're already in New Hampshire. You're doing an event up there. And, uh, um, boy, uh, there, there's so much to talk about, so many things that are happening. But um, before I launch into uh, some of the, uh, I guess, some of the issues uh, we're going to touch on and, and what would be like if you were in uh, as president today and boy I, I could only wish uh, folks I had the opportunity to uh, uh, travel with uh, Governor Johnson for a little bit and and some of the personal things that we talked about are some things that uh, folks might not know about or, or, or things that might get out Gary is is that um, two things that really jumped out at me one is is that you love the conversation you love to uh, uh, talk about issues and as governor uh, there were two things. One was uh, um, on Thursdays, I believe, uh, folks could come from all over the state and talk to you for five minutes about anything and anything. And I can't even imagine what that was like because uh, <laughs> it's, you know, Frank, can you imagine, so, you know, uh, a governor opened the doors and, and for five minutes. And then the second thing I just want to want to touch on to uh, uh, Governor was was the fact that when you were running for reelection, uh, you had a big lead. And and of course, your opponent wanted to debate. And uh, Michael, one of the things was was that uh, what's political wisdom these days would be, uh, well, maybe we'll give you one debate or maybe none at all. But what did you do, Governor? <laughs> well, I debated my opponent 28 times. Uh, <laughs> I, I controlled the process. And, and uh, the earlier program you were mentioning was Open Door After Four. So the third... Uh, the third Thursday of every month, uh, anybody in the state could come in and uh, talk to me uh, starting at four in the afternoon on five-minute increments. And it turned out to be very, very informative, and uh, uh, I, just, uh, uh, I just thought it was, I thought it was terrific that no one could say that they couldn't uh, go and see the governor if they wanted to do that. Outrageous stuff. I, you must have heard some great stories. Can you imagine? I love Fred? it. I love it. <laughs> <laughs> and now, yeah. I, <laughs> no, I had the I had the wackiest five minutes that you could ever imagine, and then uh, right after the wackiest five minutes, why well, I, I had something that I could, uh, or I found out something that I could actually fix. And of course, I wasn't just fixing it for the person that was sitting in front of me; uh, I was fixing it for uh, probably dozens of others uh, that uh, that came up against the same thing when it came to state government. And all that stuff uh, I, uh, probably helped you, uh, uh, like we mentioned before, uh, uh, take a state that was upside down. You left it with a billion-dollar surplus. You got elected as a, uh, a Republican in a, uh, a state that's two-thirds Democrat. And uh, I think that speaks volumes for a, a, exactly what you were able to accomplish as governor of New Mexico. Well, and I always said that, uh, you know, I, I was uh, elected as a Republican, but... Uh but I think I got to serve eight years as a libertarian governor of New Mexico under the guise of being a Republican. How did that work out in a state that uh, is two to one Democrat? Uh, I got reelected by a bigger margin the second time than the first time. So, you know, speaking with a broad brushstroke, and I know you guys talk about it all the time, I think the majority of Americans are fiscally responsible. I think the majority of Americans are socially accepting of others' behavior or, or tolerant of other people's behavior. Now, uh, we're going to get into some of the policies, and uh, um, whether it's the IRS or NDAA in a moment, but uh, you also have our America Initiative. Um, I'm just looking at uh, some of the people that are on board with that. Uh, besides yourself, you're the chairman, uh, John Mackey, who is uh, uh, CEO of uh, Whole Foods, uh, uh, Buddy Romer you have on there, Barry Goldwater Jr. Uh, what is that all about? Well, it's 
it's uh, it's my vehicle, if you will, to allow me to go out and uh, and and be a spokesperson for these issues. Lou, I don't think anybody else is offering up my uh, voice. I think that uh, today, when you talk about a Republican slash Libertarian, uh, that that's uh, that that's somebody with a social agenda, without exception. Right. And I don't ha- I don't have a social agenda, and I think that uh, when it comes to Libertarian, uh, that, that that's very important. Look, I think most of us are accepting or uh, at least tolerant of uh, other people's behaviors, even though we might not agree with those behaviors. Now, X uh, was on just before you, and uh, uh, certainly I mentioned it. We all know what happened with the Presidential uh, Debate Commission. We also know what happened. Uh, folks, For you, if you don't uh, uh, remember, uh, Governor Johnson was on the Republican stage until they kept you off that Republican stage, correct? Well, I really, I, I was, uh, the issue ended up being uh, that I wasn't in the polls uh, that determined who got in the debates. Well, how do you get in the debates if you're not in the polls? And about halfway through the debates, they stopped issuing criteria for the debates uh, completely. And I was able to get into a couple of debates because in a couple of debates, they actually included me in the polls. Well, there you go. So if you were in in the White House today, so we'll start getting into some of the issues. And, and, and I, I could only wish, uh, I, I wrote some of the stuff down, uh, Benghazi, IRS, Syria, NDAA, Patriot Act, NSA, immigration, drones. Which one do you want to start with? <laughs> well, let, well let's, let's start with one of the breakdowns uh, it, that exists in the public sector. And that is, uh, having been in business, uh, what I what I learned is is that it's really easy to hire. It's really really difficult to fire. But if you can't fire, uh, if you can't fire somebody who isn't working out, why things break down? You end up out of business because uh, they literally <laughs> take the money home at the end of the day, right. uh, and, and it doesn't work. So, so many people get involved in the public sector, in government, that have never hired and fired. Well, if you've never hired and fired, hiring is really easy, and you never make a mistake, and I'm being as facetious as I possibly can be, because you do make mistakes. Things don't work out for whatever reason. And I think I'm really good at hiring in the first place, but mistakes get made, and I think I'm really good have been really good at identifying who does their job and who doesn't do their job and fixing that. So here you have Obama, who's who's hiring is easy. He's hiring a whole bunch of people who have never hired and fired. So everybody gets hired. It's real easy, and nobody gets fired. So in the case of the IRS, heads should roll and not and not rank and file people who are just following orders, but people who instigated this kind of program. And it doesn't have to be the IRS; it can be any agency in government. These people should lose their jobs because they did wrong. And do these things happen regardless of whether or not it's a Republican or a Democratic uh, a Democrat administration? Absolutely. But it's but it's how you handle these issues that do happen all the time. And IRS really, I think, is kind of a constant issue. Uh, and by that, I mean bureaucrats that meddle in your and my life and, and shouldn't be doing that. How about NDAA? What would happen there? Well, I would have never signed the National Defense uh, Authorization Act in the first place, uh, which... Uh, which does not allow for due process. Uh, you and I can be arrested and detained without being charged. Uh, I was listening to X a little bit uh, before uh, I got on. I think one of the issues uh, with, uh, with privacy in this country is that none of us can really identify with how this is adversely affecting us that we're all law-abiding citizens. We don't care what the government does because we're law-abiding. Well, I hope as a result of, uh, of these disclosures, uh, the disclosure that we're gathering this massive amount of information, I hope we're able to tap into some ways that, holy cow, that can adversely... One thing I found out, Lou, 
is that uh, maybe you have talked about it and you can shine some light on it, but my understanding is is that your cell phone, even though it's not turned on, can be tapped into by the government and your conversation in the room, even though your cell phone is not turned on, can pick up that conversation. Holy. And by turn by turned on, I mean activated. That, wow. That is correct. <laughs> I've, I've heard that one as well. And, and did you notice that most of the new cell phones cannot have their battery removed for exactly that reason? Why do you think well, the backs don't come off of iPhones? And, but, but here's an example of people really can't relate to that. Well, why would the government want to listen to my benign conversation? Because <laughs> I'm law-abiding. And if they do want to listen to my benign conversation because I'm law-abiding, well, let them go ahead and do that. That's still the attitude right now. There, there is not something that we can attach ourselves to that, holy cow, uh, as, a, as, a, as mankind, we're not going to stand for this anymore. I think, though, that there, there may be an example or two out there, and maybe we'll, maybe we'll tap into that so that we can, we can hit a vein that will prevent us from continuing this uh, invasion of privacy in the name of security when this country has always been about liberty and freedom and protecting our, our protecting our civil liberties. Lumping all of the, the Middle East and uh, foreign policy, uh, President Gary Johnson, uh, what would be happening with uh, things like Benghazi, Syria, the whole nine yards over there in the Middle East, uh, uh, Governor? Well, an, another example of, uh, of uh, bureaucrats, uh, those elected to office, uh, is, is that... Uh, Facts get presented in a way that you as a citizen, we as citizens, well, how can you deny us going into Syria to prevent uh, this genocide that's going on? I mean, that's the way it gets presented, and so everybody stands up and says, well, yes, we should prevent that genocide. We should prevent all these killings. But what we're not realizing is is that we trade one kind of killing for another killing, our substitute for the uh, tyrant that uh, currently exists ends up to be a new tyrant uh, that's just uh, propped up by the United States. I believe that we have hundreds of millions of enemies to this country that would not exist but for our military interventions, and the fact that with our drone strikes, we don't just knock out the target. We kill hundreds of innocent civilians that have friends, family, co-workers that vow vengeance against the United States for what has happened to their friend, to their family member, to their co-worker. Uh, they vow vengeance uh, that they're going to get that vengeance um, including giving of their own life to accomplish that. Exactly. Uh, uh, you know, bring the, bring the troops home and uh, 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 get out of this interventionist policy, it, it seems as though that uh, we've been uh, hell-bent on for so long. And we're not understanding that the unintended consequence of our interventions, as well-meaning as they always are, end up having an unintended consequence of actually creating more enemies and not and not resolving the killing that's taking place. It's trading one killing uh, for, for another killing. Uh, last question for you, because I, I, I know you have a busy day ahead of you. Uh, as a uh, border state governor, um, shed a little light. Uh, I, I, we talked about our immigration uh, uh, policies and, and some of my thoughts, but uh, that's something that I, I think uh, we never really uh, uh, discussed that much. And uh, what are your thoughts on immigration? What did you do as governor? Um, and uh, what would your suggestions be when it comes to uh, this immigration uh, uh, reform and policy they're trying to put through in uh, Washington today? Well, we should not build a fence. That's, that's just a horrific waste of time and money. And as simple as it is, if we build a 20-foot fence, it's a 22-foot ladder that gets over the 20-foot <laughs> fence. And if we want to build the fence 80 feet high so that no ladder can get over it, then, then it will just be tunneled underneath. Look, let's start with a basic premise that I, that I firmly believe as a, as, a, as a former border state governor 
and that is, is that immigration is really a good thing. These are hard-working people uh, that are just looking uh, to come into this country and do work that U- U.S. citizens don't want. People don't want to hear that. People don't believe that, but that's the case. So we should make it as easy as possible for somebody that wants to come into this country and work to get a work visa. I'm not talking about a green card or citizenship, which should be part of comprehensive immigration reform, but let's make it easy for somebody who wants to come into this country and work to work. You can't get a work visa and come into the United States and work. Yet you know that if you can get across the border, even illegally, that a job awaits you. Another thing, so we don't want so uh, a work visa should entail a background check because we don't want criminals coming into this country. It should include a Social Security card so that applicable taxes get paid. Now, I'm advocating eliminating, uh, uh, abolishing income tax, uh, corporate tax, uh, eliminating the IRS, uh, and replacing all existing federal tax with one federal consumption tax. In this case, I'm embracing the fair tax. That really covers the base when it comes to immigrants, whether you're legal or illegal, when it comes to paying taxes, because no one would avoid paying one uh, federal consumption tax. I really think it's the answer to tens of millions of American jobs being created in this country. We're going to need all the immigrants uh, with work visas that we can uh, that, that will come into this country because that's how many new jobs will get created if we'll just change our tax structure. It, it's an amazing and, tax and, structure. And, then, and last base to touch is so much, uh, if not all, of border violence is uh, prohibition related. Prohibition of drugs. I advocate legalizing marijuana, legalized marijuana, arguably 75% of that border violence with Mexico goes away right away uh, because uh, that's the cartel's involvement in, in just uh, marijuana. Well, Governor, thank you so much for uh, uh, calling in today. Uh, uh, it looks like you have a nice day up there in New Hampshire. Uh, I, I believe you're talking uh, up at Porkfest later on this uh, this evening, and uh, um, we sure do appreciate the time, and uh, we'll be in touch, and uh, we'll, we'll certainly pass on the information here. Uh, and, folks, if you need to get a hold of Gary Johnson, you could do it through his uh, American Initiative. And, uh, Governor, thank you so much for calling Thank well, you. Lou, great being on with you all the time, and uh, just uh, you know, I'm your, I, I am, I'm Lou Jessikoff's uh, best friend, <laughs> meaning uh, best fan. You, you're, you're terrific, Lou. Keep up the fight. Yeah, he, for everybody listening, uh, Lou is somebody who does take on this fight with no uh, uh, other than love of uh, love of country and mankind and you're, freedom you're and best. liberty. Thank you. <laughs> And that's why we launched the Independent Gazette, our paper. Uh, uh, I just wrote some quick notes down when we were covering the IRS rally in Washington today. Boy, uh, Michael, we saw an awful lot of uh, fair tax uh, uh, signs up there. So I think you, uh, we're starting to make a, a, a difference, uh, Governor, and you're certainly uh, getting this information out there. And, and as people start hearing it more and more, uh, they start looking at it. So uh, thanks for the kind hey. words, and uh, we'll, we'll see you uh, shortly. And Governor Lou Jasikoff for running mate. <laughs> no, I think yeah, he's he's off. And uh, uh, please, no, we don't we don't want to destroy him completely here. So, uh, so that was uh, that was that was great, Michael. Uh, uh, it was ninety four three FM to talk. You listen to Sandy Check eight 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 five seven seven four four eight seven. Some of the lines have been uh, loosened up. So, if you want to get uh, on board about this immigration issue or what uh, Governor Johnson had to say or anybody have to say, and uh, uh, I, you know, we're going to take a. a a one minute quick break here and uh when we come back uh boy time is uh flying by here and it's we'll almost gone here. it's almost gone brought to you by lorimar home care sanity check with tea party mike libertarian lou saturday mornings 94.3 fm the talker as we roll down this unfamiliar road and although this way Stringing us along 
Just know you're not alone Cause I'm gonna make this place your home That's right. We're going to make this place your home. 94.3 FM, The Talker. This is Sanity Check, uh, Libertarian Lou, Tea Party Mike, Frank Sorek, Taxpayer Association. Uh, Michael, your thoughts? Well, you know, I was just thinking as we were on break that when Gary discusses it, it sounds so oversimplified. But in reality, (laughs) it is that simple. It is that simple. And we keep getting the lies and, and how we don't understand, you know sitting in front of Luzerne County and putting out, you don't understand. We as American citizens do understand, and it is that easy to fix these situations. He used to say all the time, good government is easy. Yes. And, 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 and I know, Frank, you would think it too. I mean, can you imagine going into Corbett's uh, governor's office and, and sitting down for and five, five minutes? For five minutes, tell him anything you want. Yeah. <laughs> I, I can't even imagine. Like. Pennsylvanians can't even get the opportunity to speak with the guy on the phone. Try calling his office. I dare you. Yeah, and and can you imagine just sitting down, sitting down and, and 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 Michael? I got to tell you some of the stories. Uh, you can imagine some of the. Oh yeah. <laughs> I, I, honestly, God, what a great concept! Five minutes with the governor. I talk about anything you anything want. Anything you want. Oh, he said he. They talked about uh, you name it. Aliens to fixing the borders. <laughs> to, uh, you know how how, I, to, how to get the taxes done. He says, I bet Louis. he's heard it all, but. <laughs> People uh, coming drunk. I mean, the yeah, at the, okay. you got at the end minutes. of the day, if he got one solution out of that, you know, that was uh, the average person brought forward, you know, then it's worth it was worth it. Yeah, and uh, that's exactly what uh, um, he would say. I mean, uh, some you know, because people do have great right. solutions, and and Mike, I think that's that's part of what we've been doing here too. Is is that we have this conversation? We say it all the time. We all want the same things in life. Who doesn't want clean air? Who doesn't want clean water? Who doesn't want safe and secure roof over our heads for our kids and our families? Who doesn't want affordable health care? Who doesn't want you know quality education for our kids and grandkids? And until we have those conversations, we have different ways to get in there. It's also easy to see why everybody wanted Gary Johnson out of that race quick. And he, the reason he wasn't included in the debates early on is they didn't want his message out there. It was that simple. And originally he was out polling Bachman. He was out polling Kane. And then all of a sudden, boom. And, you know, and, and once again, folks, we have to really look at the way this whole debate commission, what's happening here in Pennsylvania. Pennsylvania is still the worst state in the union to get on the ballot. I was just reading that last night on some of the emails and, and how difficult things are. So uh, we got changes to make, Michael, but we're, we are making headway and uh, um, we're just going to uh, keep plugging along. Well, you know, and just as last week as we talked about how we were in place as far as job creation, 48 or 49 in the union. You know, so, so Pennsylvania does need a lot of work. And, you know, certainly that open-door policy like Gary Johnson had, I think, would be a real asset. Although we'll never see it. Michael, we're at that time. It, it flew by today, and uh, I really did enjoy this show. You got it as always. and uh, God bless all. God bless everybody, and we'll see you uh, maybe Founders Day. Stop in Factoryville. See you guys later. <laughs>